uh, of news that you don't get anywhere else. And, and I think CNN does yeah, a great I'm, job Yeah, but I'm talking that. about the people on CNN. And what I, I know what the conservative side of America thinks, and I don't blame them. I watched Kamala's speech last night. It ended at 8.09, well, I guess 11.09 in the East. It wasn't until 11.23 till the... Conser the one conservative guy, what's his name? Scott Jennings. This lonely Scott, I call him. David Urban was there, too. Wait a second, wait a second. I watched, from 8.09 to 8.23, they were just gushing about how great a speech it was. And I think she did fine. I didn't think it was as good as they were making it out to be. But if I'm a conservative in America, and I'm watching CNN, just for the straight middle of the road, that's what I hear for 15 minutes, is it's great, and then lonely Scott. <laughs> It does look, I mean, and when you see the pattern, it does look like tokenism. It's kind of like the same as The View. It's like it's almost better to have nobody there, like MSNBC, than to have this... Because that happened does not mean I or Katie or any other Republican has to give up on every single value that we've mm -hmm. ever had, whether it has to do with taxes or the court or any other policy. You're asking Republicans to turn over the government to absolute exactly. radical liberals over one day, and I'm not prepared not to do it because, right. I, because I believe, because Scott, I, no, 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 listen, no, because no, I believe, because Scott, I believe listen, policy you, choices you, have, you really, I, I believe they Scott, matter to the future of the country. And what, Profound policy implications and decisions mm -hmm. are coming from the next administration. I firmly believe if the Democrats win, and if they somehow keep control of the Senate, which I don't think is likely, but is possible, it they is. will eliminate the filibuster. And they will change this mm -hmm. country in a way that we can never recover. That is important to and me. What now, does listen, that look okay, like? I don't begrudge, I don't begrudge your like viewpoint, that. but you cannot begrudge a Republican for wondering, hey, maybe it's not a great idea for us to drive off the left side of the road so far we can never find our to way back. Begrudge John anyone Bolton? their opinion, their political opinion. Mm -hmm. If he wants to have that, that's fine. Here's what I'm telling you. If you continue to go out and browbeat every Republican in this country and say they're not a patriot or they're a disgrace, they're voting for it's a disgrace what or whatever. The Harris it is going to backfire on Harris. But that's not what the Harris campaign is doing. In what fact, are you doing you right at, now? Why would any Republican who believes in any of the old or new tenants of the Republican Party vote for Kamala Harris? She's going to do. She's going to pack the court. She, remember, her voting record was as the most liberal senator. Her platform for president was as liberal or to the left of Bernie Sanders. Why would any Republican? How could they possibly reach because the conclusion that by voting for I this somehow that. returns, returns us to the conservative way? It makes no sense. Okay, I, can answer that. I don't know about you guys, but Scott Jennings was the best hire that CNN ever did. He makes their shows bearable. As you saw from the intro, I want to kind of highlight biased journalism and how I think it's actually hurting and ruining politics. Because as you saw from the intro... Caitlin Collins tried to make this argument that, yeah, we represent both sides. We give them equal time. But it's not about the time. It's about the quality of that time. If she's debating, over, uh, so I keep saying debating, but that's how it always comes across when Caitlin Collins interviews a Republican lawmaker. It comes more across as a debate, while when she does interviews with a Democrat lawmaker, it comes across more as an interview. The Democratic lawmaker is allowed to make all the kind of uh, 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 talking points, framings, defining the other side as much as possible with no pushback. A lawmaker, a Republican lawmaker comes onto that show, Kate and Collins show, and she's a lot more aggressive. She's a lot more outspoken. She interrupts a lot more. Like, do a play-by-play. -play. Like, that's just my argument. Do a play-by-play. -play. And in the intro, you saw Scott Jennings Pretty much, and the reason why there was so much cuts is because he was surrounded by these liberals and that and a never Trumper trying to essentially struggle session him into admitting that it is unpatriotic to support Donald Trump. Right? You're getting lectured about patriotism from a party, the Democratic Party, who now all of a sudden are pro-Americans, who defends burning the flag. Yeah, you're allowed to do that, free speech, you hoo, but that's not patriotic. Name me a time when Republicans or conservative uh, riot burned flags. I don't think you can remember one. And even if they did, Democrats burned a lot more flags than Republicans have. But they're the more patriotic party. Uh, you're, you're unpatriotic if you don't support Kamala Harris. This is the pressure line they're trying to do on conservatives. Make it make sense. This is what I'm talking about. Gaslighting people to support Kamala Harris because Kamala Harris cannot stand on her own. She can't. You want me to support a party that's a, a Democratic Party when 
This is what they're doing in Minnesota and Michigan. Sorry, Michigan Dems Secretary of State keeps RFK's name on the ballot while planning to keep a Cornell West off the ballot. Look at this gerrymandering. This is patriotic. Is this what you're supporting as returning back to conservative values, authoritarianism by the Democrats? Wisconsin Election Commission forces JFK, I say JFK, RFK Jr. to remain on the ballot even after dropping out. Look at that. He, he tried so hard to get on the ballot. Now that it doesn't benefit them for him to not be on the ballot, now they're pushing him to be on the ballot. Make it make sense. Breaking. No, this is not what I wanted to report. Look at this. California moves to give illegal immigrants up to $150,000 loans for new homes. Does that sound patriotic to you? Your countryman pays 100% of the, the benefits and they get none of the gain. Make it make sense. But Democrats, oh yeah, you gotta vote for Democrats. Oh, oh principled Republicans will rather vote for Kamala Harris than Donald Trump. I'm tired of these sorry ass excuses for a narrative. You got the... Biden administration who got exposed, essentially, for pressuring Mark Zuckerberg in censoring COVID-related information. And look how Jake Tapper frames it. He puts in, in quotes, pressured. When we all know, we all experienced it. Yo, we got lowering impre uh, impressions on our videos. Hey, there's a news or there's this national global organization called GARM that got disbanded when, we was about to, when Daily Wire was about to get a, a lawsuit to investigate against them. When Rumble X made a lawsuit to attack Garm for pressuring advertisers not to advertise on content that they view as going against their narrative. But well, how CNN frames it? Pressured. AKA, they don't believe it. Right? But, it, let it, but if it was Donald Trump, would they be putting the same quotation marks? I don't think so. And it's funny how people will go along with censorship just to get back at a perceived evil that they've been conditioned to think. I told you, Trump derangement syndrome is all made up. All of it. All made up. It's all made up to make you feel angry about a guy that, in reality, his policies does more for the American people than what your people are doing. What guarantee do you have of any power over these issues in the administration? And two, why are you, who's known for being a savvy person, so quick to trust that Donald Trump will deliver on what he says. Well, so to answer your second question first, look, where we are right now is we have taken a year. Bobby's been running for over a year. We have mm -hmm. crossed this nation. We have talked to Americans. We have met people from all ends of the political spectrum, which is what you should be doing if you are running for a representative office. 100%. You should be out there listening. And yep. our job is to bring that voice to whomever is going to be sincere in their reception to hearing the American public, where they're hurting, what is going on. I mean, farmers, like farmers are so underrepresented right now. And, and this is why I brought up some of my criticisms of Kamala Harris's food cap economic policy, right, mm -hmm. or food price capping. Farmers mm -hmm. are on their knees in this country right now. They are not price gouging. To say that our farmers are price gouging when they are already on their knees, who mm -hmm. can I take that message to today? You tell yeah, me, that's a fair Chris, criticism. who's going to listen that's to me? Because I have taken this message for years to the Democratic Party, and I cannot get through to anybody. It's not like this has mm -hmm. happened overnight. I didn't wake up one yeah. morning and say, what a great idea it would be to leave the Democratic Party. No. No, I tried everything, everything in my capability to get through to someone who would listen and hear this actual science, to hear mm -hmm. the people on the ground, to listen to American voices. And we've got to judge people by their reactions. We've got to judge people by the people around them. And right now, mm -hmm. Trump has some really good people around him, and he's willing, he's, he's more than willing to listen. He wants to listen, understand, verify, and then say, all right, who's going to help me get this done? Tell me policies that Democrats are doing that actually benefits the American people. Forgiving student loan debt, which will cause inflation. Student loan forgiveness attributed 27% to the inflation rate that we're all experiencing now. So for a small select group, because only about, what, 40% of Americans have a college degree, graduated from college? So you're going to make the majority of Americans pay for the benefit of a minority of Americans. 
and you want to put you want to push that as a good thing. It only benefits people who are in college debt, who are irresponsible. And the same people who want student loan forgiveness are not the same people who say, hey, maybe we should stop student loans from being given in the first place. Make it make sense, student loan forgiveness people, people who want student loan forgiveness. You want us to forgive your student loans, but at the same breath, you don't want to stop student loans from the government, even though you got caught up in the trap. You call it a trap. Oh, yeah, we get it. we, it's predatory lending, but you don't want to stop student loans, federal student loans. Make it make sense, but you want us to forgive it. And then the problem keeps continuing. So you want us to keep uh, keep forgiving student loan debt. You want to put all these um, desirable sounding policies. Oh, let's make college free. Who, how are you going to pay the teachers? How are you going to pay the faculty? How are you going to pay the staff? So you expect them to teach you for free and let their family starve? How are they going to make money if everything's free? Oh, the federal government? Oh, more. Oh, so more printing. Oh, so more spending. Okay, more inflation. Because this is the trade-off you make when you want government benefits. Inflation is your tax. That's the reality. Printing more money to supply when you have a shortfall because the government doesn't generate enough tax revenue to justify all this government spending. Oh, Kenny, all you got to do is tax the rich. How is taxing the rich beneficial to America? Taxing the rich, the rich provides jobs for America. The only reason you're allowed to pay, the only reason you can pay taxes is because a rich person a corporation is paying your salary and based on that salary you you use to pay your taxes. So if you tax a person that's responsible for giving you money, all of us money, because at the end of the day, one thing that capitalists understand is one thing that conservatives understand and conservatives view things from a practical point of view is that we're all interdependent on each other. We're dependent on the rich because usually they create industries, they create cap, they have the capital, they create jobs. Most people are, are, are employed by Small businesses, mid-sized businesses, not national, not national conglomerate corporations. They're the minority. But all these tax laws, all these things are only benefiting big companies. When most of us work for small businesses, mid-sized businesses. But here you are. This tax are rich. And then these same rich people go, mm-hmm, let's move our stuff to Singapore. Okay, we're gonna keep we're gonna keep finding tax laws. The rich people are going to see it coming before you even you even get the opportunity to take money from them. Imagine that. Elon Musk willfully pay taxes. $11 billion at that. And then people have the gall to say they pay more taxes than the rich. Make it make sense. One individual, Elon Musk, pays $11 billion in taxes. How many, how many Americans would it take to equate to the same contributions as Elon Musk when it comes to tax revenue? It shows you that the government spending is reliant on the rich. And, as, and this is this is my argument against progressive tax rates. You give more power to rich people with progressive tax rates because the, the rich know most of the money is coming from them. So they have more leverage in the situation than you. And they always will in, in, in the grand scheme of things. And this is why I laugh when people sit here saying, oh, socialism is better. No. All you do is change the game. In capitalism, it's about, hey, whoever provides the most value gets the most money. If you change our system to socialism, then all the smart people who, like all the Elon Musk of the world, all of them, instead of focusing on, okay, how can I provide value for society? Okay, how can I get into power? How can I get into politics? Because you change the incentive. In socialism, instead of being the most valuable people, the people who contribute the most to society, being the richest and most successful, it will be the person who is more politically savvy that will be the richest and successful. That's all you do. That's all socialism is. You're just changing the game. There's always going to be haves and have-nots. I just think capitalism gives you more opportunities to have a better lifestyle compared to the socialism. It benefits more people. Capitalism benefits more people than socialism. Socialism is slavery. The only people who are rich in socialism are politi politically connected people. Tell me I'm lying. In capitalism, you can come from the bottom. You can be raised by a single parent household. You could, come, you could be an orphan and be the richest person in the world. That's capitalism. But it has to be on your own merit. Freedom to sell, freedom to buy, freedom to fail. That's capitalism. Socialism is permission to sell, permission to trade, permission to fail. Actually, no. You fail if you don't comply with the government. That's socialism. Socialism is slavery. You think I'm lying? Look at slavery, right? And pretend that slaves are citizens. 
and pretend that the the house that the slave master lived in is the White House. Perfect illustration of socialism. You work, government gets the fruit of your labor, and then the government gets to decide how to distribute that produce, that resource. For instance, you you make crops, right? Let's say the slaves make crops, and they and they you know they they till the field, they they take care of the land, and then they give all the proceeds to uh, the 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 house, the big house. Then the big house decides, okay, who gets to get the food? Even though you contributed to the food being put in the pot, the person gets to make decisions on how who gets it. And if let's say you on the slave master's um, bad side, uh, no, he's gonna starve here. But you help put food in there, right? Capitalism is okay. I made this. I get a cut. This is my cut, and I'm working to, and I can still feed myself, even if the slave master don't like me or not. He like what I produce. Slavery. You work, I eat. Socialism. I you work, we get your tax dollars. Imagine that. Anything more than thirty percent, I think, is outrageous in my view. Anyway, that's why I'm in favor of a flat tax. Hey, you shouldn't be able to discriminate against a, one American over the other just because that American makes way more money than the other. That's why I say flat tax is a more equitable system. But you're unpatriotic if you support Republicans, and I'm tired of this asinine narrative that the Democrats keep trying to push. And that the the journalist keep, seems to just go right along with it. I'm tired, and I, I and I think many Americans are tired too. But let me know your thoughts about it. You th are you sick of biased media, right? I I know I know I am. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.